Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jaya Yu, and I am the Senior Vice President of Product Development at Learning A to Z. I am with members of the Learning A to Z product experience and product management team. We are excited to provide an introduction to and history of Learning A to Z with a sneak peek into the future. We will show you how educators' voices and students' voices have shaped us from the very beginning and continue to mold what we do, how we do it, and why we do what we do. Please meet the team. You will see us pop in and out and share over the next 30 minutes or so. As we share, please add your comments, your questions and thoughts to the chat. We will do our best to respond and we always welcome your thoughts, suggestions and advice. So don't hold back. Let's start with the journey. Many educators conduct learning walks to experience a school day and learning through the eyes of their students. We do the same. We conduct virtual and conceptual teacher walks and student walks to experience our programs while in the shoes of our teachers and our students. We do this to ensure that what we deliver is both teacher supported and student centered. Let's walk in the shoes of one of your students. In this case, it's Luca. You or your teachers may know a student just like Luca. Let me introduce you to Chris and Rashawn to tell you more. Thanks, Jaya. The journey today starts with me playing the role of classroom teacher. I've got a rambunctious first grader named Luca who isn't a fan of reading, but he does love animals. I can see in the skill reports at the Kids AZ student site that he's struggling with comparing and contrasting as a skill. I'm gonna leverage his passion for animals to see if we can find some engaging texts that will help get Luca practice in his problematic skill areas. So let's log into Raz Plus and see what we can find. So here I am at Raz Plus. And I could browse through the level books and find something in there. But since I know I'm looking for something rather specific here, especially when it comes to the skill I'm trying to improve, I'm gonna search for compare and contrast. Oh, I can see it comes up right away. Uh, but I'm looking for compare and contrast with animal books. So let's search that. Oh, there's a lot here. Uh, Luca is a as a level D first grade reader. So we're gonna apply that filter. So I only see the level D books. Uh, animal horns, animal tongues, lots of books in here that would be perfect for this guy. I think I'm gonna go with animal tongues. Let me view the book landing page and, and confirm that it's gonna teach the skill that I want him to learn more about. So yep, in the comprehension quiz, He's going to have some compare and contrast questions. Uh, I could view the book myself to see what the experience is going to be like for Luca, but I'm very familiar with assigning books. So I'm going to go ahead and assign this book to him. I'll select him from my class chart here, Mr. Luca Smith, and assign it. All right. Now that it's assigned, I'm going to let Luca know it's available immediately for him to read. <clears throat> so, Rashan. Do you wanna take us through Lucas, Lucas part of the journey? All right, thanks Chris for doing that. So as Luca, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take you on a journey of, of, of what he sees when he goes to log in. So initially when he hits the kids a through z.com, he's gonna find his teacher. And you're gonna see a list of different students that pop up. Luca will find his name. So you'll see that each of these names are symbol related. So for Luca, my is the pink heart. Now, for the purpose of this, I'll show you the password, but as you know, it's uh, something that's personal. We'll be sure to change this after. Okay, so once Luca is logged in, the interface, you'll see all of the classes that he's currently enrolled in. You see vocabulary, his head sprout, writing, reading, and science. So because we're focusing on books today, we're going to click on reading. Then we'll click on my assignment single assignment because this is something that was assigned to him by his teacher and you get to see all of the books that are currently assigned to him now more importantly what we're going to focus on is animal tongues so if you notice that is the fifth book all right cool 
So now you see different activities. We have the listen, which is worth 10 stars, reading for 50, and the quiz. If you hover over the quiz, you notice that you can't click it as of yet, right? So the way that this works is the student will have to complete at least one of these, but he can't complete two before going on to a quiz. So let's start off with the listen. So before I press play, what I want you to know is that for Luca, when he hears this, unlike others, you get a, uh, somewhat of an automated voice. This is a natural voice audio. So let's take a look. Animal Tongues, written by Terry Patterson. Animals have many kinds of tongues. They use their tongues to get and eat food. This anteater has a long, thin tongue. This lizard has a tongue with two parts. This cat has a tongue like a brush. What is your tongue like? Woohoo, all right, cool. So we now got 10, now Luca has 10 stars. So you notice the quiz is open, but before we do that, I'm gonna take you to see what the reading section looks like. Now this gets really cool because this, this is not only self-paced, but there's a few things that Luca can do once he's reading this book. So if you notice, if Luca hovers over each of these words, they're clickable. So let's take a look at what happens when we click on tongues. We can hear the word. Tongues. We can highlight it. Move the highlight. We can add the word to a journal if he wants. Lastly, we can see what the vocabulary looks like. Right, so the muscle inside of the mouth used for tasting. So Luca has all these features to him. Now, if you look at the top right hand corner, if Luca wants to record himself while he reads this book, the option is available to do so. That way, maybe a teacher can hear how well he's performing. He has drawing tools, which he can use to annotate the text. He can uh, add some notes if he wanted to, and then back to the journal. So there's a few different options that Luca has as he reads this book. Let's continue. So again, if he listened already, this is pretty much just a review for him. There are two parts. Giraffe has a dark, strong tongue, a uh, tongue like a worm. The frog has a sticky tongue like ours. What is ours like? All right, let's see what happens. Good job. All right, cool. 60 stars, just like that. All right, now Luca is ready to take his quiz. All right. So the first question is, the turtle's tongue looks like a worm that we know. How is a lizard's tongue in the book different from a person's tongue? Well, the lizard's tongue has two parts. Right? If Luca has listened to and read this, this should be fairly easy for him. Which of the following sentences is a fact. Right? So you know the frog has a sticky tongue. And if at any point in time, Luca feels uncomfortable, unsure of any of these questions, he can click on this review to go back. All right, All right so a cat's tongue is the same as a person's tongue. Right, both tongues are used to eat food. And what does the word thin mean? No, that is not thick. All right, so we're all finished. Wow, perfect score. Here we go. Good job to Luca. All right, so now that Luca has finished reading, listening, and taking the quiz, he's now complete. Now, if you notice, at the top right-hand corner, you'll see a uh, number of stars. So currently, Luca has 2,635 stars. Let's show you what Luca can do with these stars. I'm going to click on Star Zone. I'm going to show you this cool feature of the Avatar Builder. So currently, this is what Luca looks like now. Pretty cool, not bad. We can actually use some of these stars to buy some new stuff. All right, so let's see if we could uh, give Luca a hat. All right, not bad. Let's see what we got here. All right, this private one is pretty cool. Bought us for ten thousand. Well, one thousand. All right, not bad. Let's see what else. So pretty much Luke can spend time in this uh, as a bit of an incentive, so you may, so that he can kind of update some of his cool looks. And this feature is toggled on and off by a teacher, if you'd like. Let's see what else we got. We'll give him a backpack too. That one's free, well, it's getting a little cold out. So just, uh, well, those would be in the front. All right, well, there you go. Uh, Chris, I'll pass it back over to you so you can take a look at some of the results and the reporting from the teacher side more about animal tongues than you would ever want to know. Uh, as, as a teacher now, 
I can see Lucas's progress in the Kids AZ activity reports uh, and the skill report. I can drill down into compare and contrast and see that Luca aced those questions relating to that particular skill. Uh, the detail being offered is, is really tremendous in there. I can even see how he answered each quiz question uh, individually. Hopefully the book on animals grabbed that guy's attention and I can build on that to turn him into somebody who loves reading. Uh, instilling the joy of reading into students everywhere is a great place to have Jaya jump in and tell us about the story of learning A to Z. Jaya? Thank you, Chris and Rashan. So now that you have a glimpse of learning A to Z, let's dig in. Learning A to Z started as an idea. The idea that every child deserves to have developmentally appropriate books and activities, both at school and at home. Teacher Bob Hall started this all with that idea. And with a handful of staff, he started Learning Page, which was a free website that provided teachers with printable activities. Today, that company, now called Learning A to Z, delivers hundreds of thousands of resources to students and teachers across the world. As a pre-K through six online curriculum provider, Learning A to Z is now used by more than 12 million students in more than 170 countries. We started as an ed tech and Bob Hall was always very intentional about technology. From the beginning, we have paid particularly close attention to the role that technology plays and can play and supporting teachers and their instructional goals. You see his quote here, while I recognize the contributions that technology makes and can make, I never lose sight of the fact that teachers are the difference makers. Our mission is fairly simple. Then it was all about providing easy to use, affordable and high quality resources to teachers so that they could do more for their students. Today, it's really not different at all. We provide resources to support educators as they deliver impactful instruction that their students need to thrive. Author and speaker Simon Sinek is famous for his concept of the golden circle. He says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Sinek describes the why as that compelling higher purpose that inspires us and acts as a source of all we do. We find that at Learning A to Z, we also aren't only here for people to buy what we do. We are here because of why we do it. It was important for us as an organization to put our why into words. Just as Sinek advised, we started with discussing our answers to questions like this. When are you at your best? When are you at your worst? What are you passionate about? When do you feel most energized? And lastly, why does it matter? All of these questions were really important for us to answer and understand, and we did. The last question, why does it matter, really stuck with us. It shaped our beginnings. As Bob Hall has noted, education and literacy, there's nothing more important to the future of our country and the entire world. All of us at Learning A to Z are dedicated to doing all we can to promote worldwide literacy and prepare children for a productive and happy life. So notice our why, and I want you to notice the joy in our why. Our why is to inspire curiosity, ensure comprehension, and instill the joy of learning for elementary students. Just a few weeks ago, we hosted a literacy forum for practitioners and academic experts. Dr. Tim Rosinski, who is a professor of literacy education at Kent State University and a learning A to Z advisor, he kicked off the session and he kicked it off with a song, classic Dr. Rosinski style. He provided the lyrics as you see here, and we sung along karaoke style. Go ahead, sing the song, hum it if you know it. Dr. Rosinski did this saying, let's instill the magic of song and reading. Songs are a great way, for instance, to teach foundational reading skills. Read-alongs, songs, poetry, 
and guiding students to make personal and emotional connections to learning. This is the joy of learning. And learning, literacy, education, it's a right that every child deserves. We get that teaching is both an art and a science. It is the way teachers connect with students and foster their understanding. At the same time, there is science to teaching and learning, a research and evidence base on which to build approaches to developing students' knowledge, skills, and competencies. This is the why that drives us at Learning A to Z. Paige, please tell us more about the history of Learning A to Z. Jaya, I'd be happy to. Before we get started on the history of Learning A to Z, Let's take a step back and remember what the education world was like when Learning A to Z began. Reading A to Z came to the market in 2002. So let's stop and think about where we were in the context of education in 2002. Where were you on your education journey? Were you in primary school, secondary school, college? Maybe you were already in the classroom or beyond. What did that look like? What were you using to enhance learning? If you're having trouble remembering 2002, it was a while ago, here are some events that might help bring you back. Sonia released the first cell phone with a built-in camera. Alicia Keys won five Emmys, including ones for Best New Artist and Song of the Year with Fallen. Some of you may remember that one. Apple released the second generation iPod. So I know I remember that click wheel well. It was 20 gigabytes for $4.99. Enron was on the front of all the newspapers as the DOJ announced investigations. And to bring us back to education, No Child Left Behind Act was signed into law in January. So now that we're back in 2002, let's take a minute to share our answers. If you have your phone handy, you can use the camera to scan the QR code and open up our Padlet site to share your answers. What did education look like in 2002? What did you use to enhance your learning? We're gonna give you a couple seconds to get that up and running. Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. An inch by All right, I'm gonna go ahead and keep going, but please feel free to listen as you put your answers in the Padlet. Our session presenters came together to answer this very question, and we remembered TVs belted on carts that were wheeled into classrooms. I know that was always an exciting day. Overhead projectors with the visa V markers, textbooks, carrying them in backpacks, having the class set, wrapped in paper bags. And then some of us had transitioned to the publishing world. And we remember sending out textbook packages with hundreds of workbook ancillaries and CDs to download materials, building test question softwares on floppy disks, hand editing with that red pen, and manually changing layouts. So there's just paper, paper everywhere. As all of this was going on in the world of education and publishing, Reading A to Z was going to market with printable leveled books. The concept of a consumable leveled book disrupted the market because this was something a kid could take home and own for themselves. It wasn't something that the teachers or the school had to worry about getting back. Reading A to Z also was releasing new, engaging, topical books every month at a reasonable price that allowed teachers to print books and get them home in the hands of students. This consumable format helped Learning A to Z support equity and access to reading materials for all students from the very beginning. And it's been a consideration with every product the company's released since then. Two years later, Learning A to Z disrupted the market again by introducing digital talking books with Raz Kids. You all got a glimpse of that as you walked through Raz Kids with Luca. 
Rouse Kids allowed students to listen to natural voices, read their favorite reading A to Z level books, and quickly introduced a recording function to let students practice and listen to themselves. This early adoption of digital reading enabled learning A to Z to improve over the years and be a reliable resource for hybrid learning. In the years following RAS Kids, Learning A to Z's continued to release new products to help all students learn. Over the past 20 years, Learning A to Z's continued to create products that build a love and joy for learning, whether that be through engaging vocabulary and science activities or relatable reading content that gives each student a chance to see themselves. And the great thing is we aren't done yet. As we near our 20 year anniversary, we're excited to support two new products that you'll learn more about later in this session and throughout the Connect Conference. All these products were developed with Learning A to Z's core values in mind, making teachers' lives easier and providing educational resources for all students. The consumable printed books and the digital talking books innovated classrooms in the early 2000s and positioned learning A to Z to help teachers and students in today's classrooms. Whether those be Zoom rooms, Bitmoji classrooms, or in-person classrooms where teachers need whole group, small group, and individually differentiated resources. Ala, now that we've looked at learning A to Z's history and portfolio, let's take a look at learning A to Z today. Thanks, Paige. Wow, that was a blast from the past. A lot has happened in schools and in our lives since the early 2000s. With all of those changes, Learning A to Z has also looked at how our content should change. We have taken seriously as an in-depth evaluation of how our content reflects our users, both students and teachers, who come from so many different backgrounds. You can visit our website to see our commitment to being culturally responsive. The website is on the screen here. And while there, you can find places to enter your concerns, your requests, or your contact information if you would like to join us in creating new materials or becoming one of our reviewers. We need to hear from voices representing lots of different perspectives. So how are we being culturally responsive? We have launched a multi-year review of our existing content. Moving forward, some of our resources will be retired over the summer months when teachers are not using the materials. That's a normal process of making sure we have the best and most current resources available. You may have seen retirements happening over the last two summers. Other content has been revised and updated for lots of different reasons. You can see some of that updated content here. We've listened to our customers and our reviewers and are working hard to make sure our resources are more reflective of current classrooms while also maintaining many of our beloved stories. With those updates and retirements, we're still focused on joyful learning moments. Let's take a look at some of our newly created resources. Our recently released Meaningful Conversations in RAS Plus includes new content with multimodal resources that teachers can use to teach reading skills and to support social emotional learning and classroom conversations. Notice the book, We Are Marvelous. This was written by the winning classroom of our UNICEF reading campaign. The winning classroom students were involved in the creation of content that's important to them and reflects their lives. We loved seeing the enthusiasm from our Japanese student authors. What an impactful way for them to apply their English reading and writing skills. You can also see some of the resources included in the same SEL content pack. There are songs and videos, enhanced graphics, readings in fiction and nonfiction, and discussion prompts to help the teacher engage with students in the classroom. We're proud of our Meaningful Conversations content and support that is focused on helping teachers guide their students in seeing themselves reflected in their learning materials, while also seeing the lives of other students represented. Daniel Flo, who's a member of our advisory council, puts it very well when he says, everyone can be enriched when students feel safe and supported and teachers have access to diverse materials. So what else have we been up to? 
We've been busy at learning the agency this year. You see Google Classroom improvements, NWEA partnership, French audiobooks, and our exciting kitchen science video series intended to help families at home make science accessible right from their home kitchens. But there's more to come. Rashan, I will hand it over to you now. Thanks, Ala. So let's take a look into what LAS has been doing in order to improve each of our products in the back end. Usually what customers don't normally see. So to start, we hear a need for speed. To ensure our sites load as quickly as possible, we are decreasing the number and the size of files being loaded on each page. If not already, you should have seen a significant improvement in our loading times throughout the site. This will continue to be an ongoing effort in order to be as efficient as we can while we continue to grow. And although not glamorous, we are focused on a few other things. This is the stuff you don't normally see or looks good in brochures, but it's pretty critical to us, like rostering. It's the process of uploading teacher and student information into a database for the purpose of authenticating and licensing those teachers and students. Once rostered, customers can take full advantage of our products and do things like having teachers enroll students into class sections. Students can log on and begin to use the actual product. Teachers and administrators can see student activity and reports. This goes hand in hand with integrations and interoperability when we think about how we're able to see student activity and reports so fluidly. We're making sure our products are speaking to one another and sharing data in real time, which can be assessed from one central location when it's logged in. Privacy and security is us working with our engineers to ensure our systems are safe to store and house any sensitive data. Accessibility, this is our committed pursuit to ensuring that all students can access our materials. And last but not least, our backend systems, which include the content management and asset management systems, tagging our resources to standards and skills, supporting quick processing of orders and invoices. Daphne, I'm gonna pass it back to you to tell us a bit more. Right, Rashawn, something else that's critical to us meeting the needs of all students. We know that the need for equity of instruction for students who speak Spanish as their first language has grown. We also know that when students build literacy skills in their first language, they also build their literacy skills in English. So to support our students, we're creating a comprehensive and affordable Spanish solution as an add-on to our RAS Plus program. This add-on will feature a wealth of authentic Spanish resources and translated resources to meet the needs of bilingual students, ELL students, and students in dual language programs. To support our students, we have to support our teachers. We know teachers are busy. To support their ongoing professional development, we have embedded professional development resources right in the program. So teachers can find the right resources when, so, so teachers can find the right resources right when, right when and where they need it. From articles that outline the most up-to-date research findings and pra practical application tips, to coaching videos, to thought leadership insights from experts, and even podcasts. This professional development respects the art and science of teaching while offering authentic and meaningful support to all teachers, those who are new to the classroom and those who are seasoned professionals. At Learning A to Z, we follow a model of iterative development, which means that the development of programs is broken down into smaller bite-sized pieces. And each of these pieces goes through a series of cycles of prototyping, testing, analyzing, and refining again and again. Why do we do this? Well, have you ever heard of Crystal Pepsi, Cheetos flavored lip balm, or Microsoft Bob? If you do remember these things, it's likely you also remember them as failures. These are great examples of what happens when developers don't talk or test with real users. At LAS, we are devoted testers and listeners. Why do we do this? It guides us to develop research-backed user-focused design. By gathering user insights, we avoid development errors. By gathering user insights, we proactively target our customers' problems. Finally, Page hinted at two new products on their way. Foundation A to Z provides systematic foundational reading skill instruction based on the science of reading. Our new writing A to Z adventure zone 
combines explicit instruction and practice to help make K-5 students engaged and effective writers. There's a session devoted to these two exciting new products. The team has been working very hard. Currently, there are pilot studies for both programs occurring across the country. We will take that feedback from teachers and students along with user tests so that we can continue to strengthen these products. We want to ensure that they serve our teachers and students with the highest quality and provides precisely what teachers need when they need it to ensure that students are learning at the highest level. Everything we're working on connects to our why. Inspire curiosity, ensure comprehension, and instill the joy of learning for elementary students with the teacher at the center as the difference maker. Let's end by learning and sharing with one another. If you have your phone handy, you can use the camera to scan the QR code and open up a Padlet site to share your answer. Please share your thoughts on the following question. What is your favorite quote or piece of advice about teaching and learning. Thank you so much for spending your precious time with us today. We appreciate each and every one of you.